guys, this is Crippily again with another pen review and today we're going to have a look at a Diplomat pen. The Diplomat pen that we're going to have a look at today is called Diplomat Traveler and it's a smaller pen or to be more precise I should say it is a slimmer pen because it's actually not that short. But let's have a look at the packaging first. The pen comes in a white, uh, white cardboard outer wrapper. This is the fountain pen Traveler. The color that I have it in is Lapis Black. It's sort of a matte black finish. It also comes in a number of different other finishes. You can check that out in the, on the Diplomat website. It comes in gold, silver and all that kind of stuff. And I got it with a medium nib and I'm gonna talk about the nib of course also in a minute. Slides out, out comes a metal box i believe that this is aluminium or something like that says diplomat since 1922 has the diplomat logo on it the so-called ink flower opens up like this you find the pen in like this here very neat and then a little warranty booklet with uh yeah you know warranty information and all that that kind of stuff so I find that it's a very neat packaging for the pen being really rather inexpensive. I would say this is really the entry level into Diplomat pens because that pen costs between 25 and 30 euros. So this really is a super affordable fountain pen. Now, when you look at the pen, the first impression is that it looks somewhat like the its larger brother the Diplomat Excellence. This here is the Diplomat Excellence A Plus that has a screw on cap. There's also a regular Excellence that has a pop on cap like the Traveler has. So design wise, there is definitely a lot of reminiscence to, to the bigger brother. The clip looks about the same. You have the Ink Flower logo here on top of the pen, just that uh, it's a little bit smaller here. And then you also have this silver end ring rich finished cap here at the back of the pen so just to give you first of all a comparative impression a little bit about the resemblances in between those two pens and then also maybe if you've had a or held a diplomat excellence a in your hands or maybe you own one you get a first rough comparative impression when it comes to size of the pen. So let's cover that one here, the Traveler, that the review is about a little bit more in depth. We start at the top of the cap. The finial here has the Diplomat ink flower inside. Now there is a small transparent plastic dome on top here, which gives it sort of a nice effect, uh, depending on how you hold that pen into the light. That is to say, the logo sits behind a transparent cap. Well, yeah, that's just the way it's made. Silver ring up here, then this very typical Diplomat clip that you've seen on the Excellence A Plus before. Very usable clip. It's not overly tight, not overly springy, just a perfectly usable clip. You then have a small silver center band here. You already see the beautiful matte black finish. You see it best when I angle it into the light like this. Doesn't really pick up fingerprints. Very nice. I really like silver and black pens and I especially like this matte black finish here. And then as said, here at the end, uh, you find a very shiny, you can even see my camera setup in here, end cap of the pen. As said, it's a pop-off cap sits pretty tight there is no chance that this is gonna come off by accident closes with a very satisfying click you really need to close that pretty hard for the pen to close um, then you'll find a small white inner cap like let me say on this pen here that ridge is used to post the pen uh, this pen can't be posted i've seen pictures of it on the internet posted. I don't know how that went or if it just the picture was just arranged like that or something like that because this small white inner cap which by the way does an excellent job in preventing the nib from drying out which is why it's in place in there. The nib doesn't dry out even if you put the pen down for a week or two weeks. A traveler. No problem. Just uncap it and you're good to go but 
well, as said, it will prevent the pen from being posted, so you can't post the pen. Then we have a quite large plastic section. It's a quite large section compared to the rest of the pen, which is very comfortable to hold. That step down here is not noticeable whatsoever. Yeah, well, you do notice it, but I, I shall say it doesn't disturb whatsoever. So very comfortable to hold. You can really find your position to hold that pen. I'll do a size comparison in a minute. It's a fairly average size pen. It's definitely not a short pen, but I will say, and I'll come back to that in a minute when I do the size comparison, that it is a very slim pen. So for me personally, I'll say that straight away, the pen is too slim to be used in everyday in everyday life. Like I can use that as a, it's called a diplomat traveler. So I could definitely see myself using that as a travel pen, but as a main everyday writer, the pen is definitely too slim for me personally. Then again, I have slightly larger hands. So if you do have smaller hands, that might work for you. For me, it's too slim as a main writer, as a travel pen or something like that, fine. Uh, so the section flares out a little bit like that, that plastic section, it's not slippery whatsoever. It's comfortable to hold and write with also for longer session writing sessions. The nib then here has the ink flower on top of it, Diplomat since 1922, medium. Let me compare that quick. It's a number five nib, I believe. Compare that quick to the number six nib of the Excellence A and you see a clear size difference. And I was uh, I, I was supposed to talk about the nib. I, I hinted towards that. Uh, let me do that straight away here. This number six here is a fine. This number five here is a medium. And you see the tipping is more or less almost identical with the tipping of that fine here being almost wider than the tipping of that medium. That is to say, if you already own a Diplomat Excellence A and you look into getting maybe a traveler as a travel pen, a smaller pen, be aware of the fact that if you have a fine on the excellence a on the number six uh, excellent uh, diplomat nib sorry if you have a fine on number six diplomat nib then you would and you want the same line with with that pen here with the traveler then you will or should take a medium nib here because the medium number five runs almost i want to say finer than that fine here so you know where i'm getting at that's that. Uh, maybe we can compare the nib as well to the Alami Safari nib. And you see, it's a smaller nib. Number five nib. Then you can unscrew the pen. Works very well. Nicely machined. And you can use it with standard international cartridges. I have a Pelikan Edelstein cartridge in here. It's those long cartridges that exactly fits, which is also super convenient for a traveler pen. You have a long ink cartridge there, gives you quite a large ink capacity, fits exactly in there. And then you take your cartridges with you, just pop the empty one out, the new one in, and you're good to go. But of course it's standard international. So you can also use that pen with a converter and bottled ink feed down here. Forgot to show that one. Looks also slightly different than the feed on the on the excellence. So just for you to see. Okay, now size. Let's do a first size comparison to my standard reference pen, which is Alami Safari. And you'll see that it is not exactly a short pen because also Alami Safari is not exactly a short pen. So the Traveler is a quite comfortably sized pen, as I've said before, in length. When we uncap the pen, it is slightly shorter than Alami Safari, but still Alami Safari is a quite long pen. So this is the Diplomat Traveler is by no means a short pen. Uh, as said, the pen can't be posted. Also, the Lamy Safari gets fairly long when posted, so there is no point for posting the pen. So now my main issue, as pointed out before, for the pen being a major writer is the girth of the pen. Let me bring in two other size comparisons for the girth of the pen. This is a Blackwing 602 pencil, and then I have a Stabilo point, uh, no, pen 68, not point 88, this is a pen 68. I would say that we could roughly compare the girth of those pens to the girth of a Diplomat Traveler. So the Diplomat Traveler, especially when it comes to the section here, is pretty much comparable 
to any of these two. That is a Stabilo pen 68 or a Blackwing pencil. Now, Blackwing pencils are slightly girthier than regular pencils, like your average Faber-Castell pencil or something like that. But still, this is a pencil girth, a Stabilo pen girth, especially if you hold it up here. If you prefer to hold the pen down here, it will be even slimmer. So now you maybe got a quite visual impression of what I meant when saying that the pen is a really slim and slender pen. As said, again, very nice size for traveling uh, because it doesn't really take a lot of space. But as a main writer, maybe a little bit too thin. What's left for us to do is a writing sample. For that, we zoom in and the nib is excellent. Diplomat nibs are excellent. There's no problem. Writes very smooth, very nice. Diplomat traveler. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the excellence inked. Otherwise, I could compare the line with uh, for you. But as said, this one here has a medium nib and that medium nib here is comparable to the fine nib on the excellence. Um, it is a, now this is a slightly absorbent paper and not the wettest of inks, uh, medium wet nib, writes as said, very, very nice. There are no startup issues. There's no skipping, no problem whatsoever. That here was me, that was not the nib. A very, very nice writer. I really enjoy writing with that pen a lot. And uh, yeah, for 25 to 30 euro, this is a super affordable pen, a great alternative to a Lamy All-Star or something like that. I don't see that pen around very often, which I find is a pity. It definitely deserves a lot more attention in my honest opinion. Very, very nice pen. I really like it and uh, I hope that review was useful to you and I'll glad you see you at the next review. Bye-bye.